Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today I'm going to show you how to load a tire instead of buying wheel weights. I've had a lot of uh, viewers ask me, I've got some viewers with uh, snapper rear engine riders with snow blowers. These were factory made snow blowers for the snapper and I have a couple with snow plows and they need more traction on the back of the machine. So we're going to load this tire and show you how I do it up here in Michigan. Now if you're in Florida or California or Arizona, any place that doesn't freeze you can use any liquid you want. But up here in Michigan, we have to load it with something that's not going to freeze. Now they have several things on the market, uh, but what I use that's super cheap and it's good for 25 below zero is plain old windshield washer solvent. It's 97 cents a gallon I put five and a half gallons in each tire that boosts the weight of my machine up to a hundred pounds. First thing we're going to do is, um, well let me show you this. Right now I'm siphoning the last two gallons into my air tank. And it looks like it's all in there. What I use is just, these they sold for putting um, kerosene into a kerosene heater. You can use anything to get that fluid inside this tank. That's all you have to do. You could use a funnel and pour it in a gallon at a time if you want to. Now the tire and the tube, these have to have tubes in them or it works the best to have a tube in them. The first time I loaded this I used a standard tube and what had happened is the valve stem was leaking and I lost pressure and because of the weight of the liquid inside of the tube it pulled the stem down inside the rim. Well, now you got issues. You got to try to get that back out or break the tire down and cut the tube and lose everything. I was lucky enough to get it out. So then I put a small hose clamp around here to keep it from going in if I lost air pressure. And I had issues with that cutting the stem. So I finally said that's it. I got the fluid out the same way I'm going to put it in and I went down and ordered inner tubes with threaded valve stems. I can get you a wiggly over here and get you a better look at this. The valve stem has threads and nuts on it in a washer and you actually bolt the stem in place. It cannot go anywhere. The valve stem covers that I use, it's the only ones I ever buy. They're steel. They have a rubber seat inside of them or a rubber seal that helps seal it. And it also has a tool on the end that takes the core out. You got to take the core out to get the liquid in. I have a little screwdriver I use. This is a screwdriver with a hole and a couple of slots. This is what I made a few years ago to fill the tires with. It's just a Craftsman air tank with a T on it. It's got to have an air chuck because you have to pressurize this to force the liquid into the tire. You've got a valve up here you can open and close to fill it with. Then you got this big hunk of hose. Let me back you up. It's got a T on it. This connector 
goes on the tank. This connector, let me get down here. Oh, and then I drop it. This connector is for the air hose. Now you want to have a valve on here because you don't want to over pressurize your tire. Now the key to get this stuff in here, I have a picture of this gadget. I bought it from Tractor Supply years ago and apparently they don't sell them anymore. But it's called a air liquid tire inflation adapter. <laughs> <laughs> you can find them on Amazon. Get the glare off this thing. So you can read it. Wowzer, that's bad. I don't know how I get rid of the glare. But they're ten dollars. And this is what it looks like in person. It's got a bleeder valve on the side of it. That is to relieve the pressure out of the tire. Got another hose you snap into this. This screws onto the tire. And it also has a seal in it. You screw that on your inner tube. Put your hose in. Now we want to pressurize this tank. I've got my regulator set at about 40 pounds, but you have to be careful because that still is going to overinflate the tire. So you can't put 40 pounds of pressure in it. Now what you want to do is I made a stand out of wood to support, let me get rid of this. To support the air tank. Just a bunch of scraps that I cut up because you want to rotate this tank I actually want this on the other side little heavy with all the stuff in it. There. I've got a brace on here and it won't clear the valve the way it was on there. You want to be able to turn this so the valve is at the bottom. Now if you open this valve, it starts putting the fluid into the tire. think you can but I can hear it going in need a couple of rags now you just keep filling it until the tire feels hard got to keep adding air to your tank because there's not much room in there for air and it runs out fast. Yep, 
Need some more air. Just want to be careful not to over inflate your tire. Now, once that tire gets up to, well, as much pressure as you want to put in it, you push this little button on here and it drains the water, water it drains the air out of the tire. A little air, is, a little water is going to come out because there's going to be some water trapped in the in the stem. This takes a couple of minutes, drain the air out, and then you uh, take the clamp off the bleeder button and turn the valve back on. It takes about five or ten minutes to put all five and a half gallons in this tire. Need some more air in my tank. That tank will just barely hold five and a half gallons of fluid. So there's not a lot of room for air. and we'll bleed the air pressure out of the tire. Just a short process of going back and forth to fill that up. Now when I drained them, I did the opposite. I put air in the tire. I had the valve stem on the bottom lowest point of the tire and I would drain it back into the air tank. And when it got, uh, when it didn't have any pressure left in the tire, I would inflate the tire up through these hoses and then blow it out into the tire. And you can remove almost all of it doing it that way. Let me finish filling this and I'll be back. Okay, we got five and a half gallons of windshield washer solvent in the tire. I kind of fast forwarded because I didn't think you'd want to watch paint dry as it took to blow the the water in, let the air out. But to make this, you're going to need a some type of tank that you can pressurize safely. This is a air tank from Sears. I have a 3 8 move this over here. I have a 3 8 T with a ball valve so you can fill it. It has an air chuck on it so you can uh, snap this hose on and off. You're going to want to put the male air chuck on the T because as you fill this trapped air in the tank is going to have to get out somehow and if you're using a funnel or a siphon outfit like I do it's going to bubble up all over the place. So you want an opening to get the air out. Then you can snap on your hose. Then that goes down to another valve. You're going to need valves on all these hoses. 
Um, you got a valve here on this short hose. That's how I fill the tank with air pressure. Then you can shut that off because if you take your hose off of here, water's going to spray out. So you want to keep this pressurized so you have to have a valve on it. Then I got a valve on here that I can shut off and on. As I'm filling the tank with air, I want this shut off so I'm not just blowing air into the tire. That just makes more to get out. So you want to shut this one off, open this one, open your fill valve, fill the tank with air. As much air as you can get into it because it's going to be mostly liquid in there that you're trying to pressurize. So periodically you're going to have to keep putting more air in that. Then you uh, shut off your air, open this valve up, or I guess it was open, then open this valve which is hooked to your filling valve. When you get the tire filled is with as much <coughs> excuse me, as much pressure as you want, then you gotta shut off the valve here that's filling the tire and you push this little relief that's on the side of this fill valve and it lets the air out of the tire. And then you just repeat the process until you have the tire as full as you want it. Now this tire went from about 30 pounds to over 85 pounds just by putting in the fluid. On my Ingersoll, the tractor weighs pretty close to a thousand pounds, but with the tires loaded and tire chains, I don't have any problem pushing with my dozer blade. I don't know if I, I had a picture of it. Here's a, here's a picture of the tractor with a blade on it. Now that's a 55 inch dozer blade is what they call that. And here's the other side with the um, tire on it. It's got a terrible glare for some reason. I can't really get rid of it. That's the one tire I got done. And this is the second one. Now that dozer blade, they call it that because there's a pin in it you can pull out. And if you plow snow with it, that allows the blade to tip like a regular snow plow does. But once you put the pin in it, it does not tip anymore. And I move a lot of gravel around in my driveway when I get a load of gravel dumped. I use that thing to push it around with and level it out. It works really great. In the winter time, I don't plow with it. I have a 40, what is it, 46 inch snow blower that goes on the front. It's got a couple mower decks with it. It's got a 40, eight inch I think rototiller that goes on the back and that's all hydraulically driven except for the mower deck that has a belt on it <clears throat> but that's how I put weight in the rear end of my machines when I want it I don't have to worry about it freezing and it's super cheap anything else you buy to put in here I guess they're now selling beet juice to put in these uh, tires to load them with because it doesn't corrode and rust the rims out and it's cheaper than um, I think it's chloride or chlorine whatever they mix in with the water to put in these things it rusted the rims out terrible on the old tractors and by the time they realized it it was too many people had problems so then they came out with beet juice or just put a tube in it and eliminate all them issues now this machine always had rim leaks. Most of them do. Uh, first thing I do when I get a machine in to work on is I take the tires off. I take it down to my buddy at uh, Smith's Tire in uh, Muskegon. They put tubes in them for me and I'm done with the rim leaks. 
And if you can see, well, there's a spot right here that's bubbling. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera or not. It's a spot right here. That's the air that's trapped between the tire and the tube. The tube is not leaking. So what you're going to want to do is every day or so after you do this is check your tire pressure because as the trapped air between the tire and the tube and the rim leaks out your tire your tube will expand and the pressure in the tire will go down so you're going to want to check your tire pressure every day or two depending on how bad your rim leaks are but I hope that helped you out. I know there was a couple of guys that got a hold of me and said they have a snowblower and they don't have enough traction for it. And one guy even sent me a picture of his snowblower. Where it is, I have no idea. I got way too many pictures on here, I guess. Very nice machine. Uh, you can see part of it if you can make it out. There's the snapper and here's the snowblower. That was manufactured by uh, Snapper just for their rear engine riders. It had a special, I can't really call it a mower deck, but it was, you took your deck off and you put this on and it looks like it was part of the top part of a mower deck with the spindle. Now on the bottom side, instead of a blade, it had a larger pulley than the top pulley. And when you kick that in, just like you're kicking in your mower deck, the belt that went from the bottom up to the snowblower spun faster because of the larger pulley on the bottom. And it gave you the speed that you needed to throw the snow. Um, you can Google um, snapper front snowblowers, I think. You'll bring up a bunch of videos of people blowing snow with them. And they actually do a good job. But that's just with tire chains. You want some type of wheel weights. Now... Snapper does sell a wheel weight, but they're expensive. I have one guy show me how he made his. This is the outside of my tire. It's got more room from where it mounts on the flange out here. He made a plate of steel with this hole pattern in here, and he welded on a one inch diameter piece of pipe. Then he went around to yard sales and picked up uh, bell bar weights, round weights that would fit inside of his rim. He'd slide them on that pipe and put a pin through it. Even if you go down and buy the ones that are plastic and you fill them with cement, they're really cheap, a lot cheaper than one of these wheel weights that goes on these machines. Just a couple ideas for you. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the box below or send me an email. I answer them all. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. It really helped me keep going on this channel. And uh, until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon. So long.